Hello everybody and welcome back to another video from my series Quick Thought Zone, in which I always talk about different stories from the rich Star Trek universe. I've just seen the next episode of Star Trek Discovery, it was called The Sounds of Thunder, and these are my honest opinions about it. And as usually with my Discovery videos, it will be short and almost no spoilers. I didn't hate this one. That's probably the nicest way how I can say it. That doesn't mean that I loved it, but definitely had some very interesting moments. But unfortunately also a bunch of pretty bad moments. This episode is a Saru heavy episode. If you watch my videos regularly, you probably know that Saru and Tilly are the two characters I liked from season 1, and I think that for season 2 I would also add Captain Pike, which means I was looking forward to this episode. Until I realized it's a sequel to the short track, which I thought was the dumbest short track of them all, in which nothing made sense. In that short story, Saru left his homeworld. In this episode, he gets back because the Red Angel is calling them there. Now, something weird is going on with Saru. I'm not sure if it's just bad writing or if it's going to be resolved in one of the next episodes, but he's really aggressive. I mean, really aggressive. He even has a really bad scene on the bridge. He speaks with Pike in a tone for which he should be immediately punished. Even the other bridge crew members are looking like they think he should be punished, but nothing ever happens. Pike talks to him like he thinks his behavior is completely normal. Kirk and Picard would immediately send him to his quarters, and Cisco would maybe even punch him, but Pike ignores it. Why? There is even a moment uh, which looks like Saru is going to physically harm Pike without any reason, and he gets away without any punishment. Why? Is it because the writers are, how to say it politely, not very good in writing human behavior, how they have shown us in every single episode these two ladies wrote? Or is it something else? I mean, Michael has to step in and save Spike's ass from being kicked by Saru. Was this the reason for this awkward scene? To show us another thing in which Michael is superb? You know, that this type of behavior is why everybody calls her a Mary Sue, right? And by the way, in reality, Spike would lose any authority he had on this ship that's the reason why any type of disobedience has to be immediately punished. Starfleet is a militaristic type of an organization. But when the awkward part stops, we get to something interesting. We see another violation of the Prime Directive by the crew interfering with the natural development of the Kelpians, and more than once in just this episode. Seriously, you know that these people are supposed to be our heroes, right? Why are you writing them as criminals and expecting the audience to like them? The interesting thing is that we finally see the Kelpian predators, the race called the Baul, and I really like the strange design. It's very hard to see in static pictures, but they're basically a cross between the Xenomorph from the Alien series and Armus, the Tar creature who killed Tasha Yar, and maybe even the Sea Snake creature from the beginning of Solo. But it looks interesting, and to be perfectly honest, this might be the first, or one of the first, designs which Discovery brought us, which I really like probably because it's something we haven't seen before. Because it's very rare that I genuinely like something in Discovery, I simply have to point it out. Good work. Another positive in this episode, we are finally seeing uh, the robot woman doing something interesting. Good. Uh, she's one of the things I always wanted to know anything about. 
Now we know that she can work with computers, so I guess that's better than nothing. Who knows, maybe in season 12 she will be given also some interesting character and backstory. And that's probably all of the positives I can say about this episode. There is something very strange going on with the structure of this episode. It has an A story with Saru and a B story with the doctor, but that story is absolutely pointless and boring, so I'm skipping it. And story A is interesting for the first, let's say, 25 minutes. Then it turns into a huge aha. Uh -huh. As soon as Saru gets beamed to the bowel ship, I have no clue what happened. My working theory is that the writers of this episode didn't know how to end it, so they hired the neighbor's five-year-old kid to finish the story for them. Suddenly Saru's sister is there because the writers probably uh, needed uh, Saru to protect something, I guess. And she's also a completely different person than uh, she was so when we have seen her last time. Which is another proof for my five-year-old theory. Saru then gets attached to the wall because the writers like kinky stuff, I guess, and generic flying things from every science fiction film ever start to attack him. Then he turns into a magical porcupine, quills start to grow on his head, and he can shoot them, because of course he can. I expected that he will also grow wings and fly away, but I must admit that I'm positively surprised that he saved his sister. It's so rare to see these days a man saving a woman on screen. They're really brave to show something like that in current year. I honestly expected Michael Burnham will appear there out of nowhere and save them all. So that's a huge plus of course, but Saru does something what every good Starfleet officer does. He messes with the evolution of a primitive race and forever changes their society. I'm pretty sure Starfleet Command will never have any problem with that. I'm sorry, I don't want to be personal, but I still can't understand why these two women have a job on Discovery. Everything I have seen from them so far was really, really stupid. Anyway, enough ranting. The first half of the episode was pretty good, the second half was a huge WTF, but I really liked some of the decisions they made, together with some really good designs, especially the Baul themselves. It was also nice to see the Discovery crew working on the data recovered from the dying space ball. It's nice to see something which at least slightly resembles Star Trek in a Star Trek show. Overall, on my standard scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is complete garbage, 5 is average and 10 is a masterpiece, I would give the latest episode of the Orville 10 out of 10, it was a masterpiece, but the latest episode of Star Trek Discovery deserves a 5 out of 10. I'd say it's, it's just average. A bunch of good things and a bunch of bad things, nothing truly amazing or truly awful, but as always these are just my opinions and are based only on the first viewing. Let me know what did you think about this episode down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and see you hopefully soon. Bye.